This is an example of an elite peanut variety. Elite varieties of crops are preferred by farmers because of various attributes, for example, their high yield, which leads to better profits for the farmers. However, many elite varieties are susceptible to various diseases, which is a consequence of the process of selection. As a consequence, expected high yields might be wiped out as a result of the diseases. This is not good news for the farmer as it means he, he will not be able to have an income. There are other varieties that may not be good yielding, but they might be resistance to the to, they might be good sources of resistance. These are typically referred to as an adapted variety. What breeders do is to cross the elite variety by the an adapted variety and follow this up with extensive periods of field trials uh, whereby the progeny of the crosses are subjected to extensive uh, disease pressure. This takes quite a while, up to 12 to 15 years. The process is labor intensive, it can be costly, and the precision is not so good. In light of this, Maka assisted selection becomes an attractive alternative to conventional breeding. The elite and an adapted variety may have a difference in one nucleotide in a, in a genetic region that confers disease resistance. This difference in a single base pair, as shown here, is called a single nucleotide polymorphism or a SNP. It is an example of a genetic marker that can be used for selection. This is how it works. Once the two varieties have been crossed, their progeny may not be different phenotypically in the absence of disease pressure. However, genetically, one sibling may have the target SNP associated with resistance as shown here. This SNP can be exploited to select a, to select a, a disease-resistant plant at the seedling stage. Such a procedure is known as a genotyping experiment. In contrast to conventional breeding, it, it reduces cost and increases speed and precision of a breeding, of a breeding experiment. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview of a typical genotyping experiment. The first thing I'll do is to harvest a uh, leaf sample from the greenhouse. Then I'll do my DNA extraction. I just need a small piece, so I'll excise a small portion from the leaf tissue that I harvested from the greenhouse. And I'm going to place this on, on a 96 well plate. I'll carry out my DNA extraction and these are just the last steps of the extraction process and here you can see my dna is ready since i want to genotype 384 samples i will use this robotic liquid handling system to accurately dispense my dna into a 384 well plate also displaced this dispensed is the master mix which contains primers for application of my region of interest My DNA is now ready for genotyping and I am going to do the genotyping in this Roche light cycler genotyping system. This is an example of the output that you get once the experiment is over. The plot generated reveals three major clusters with a triangle representing the plant's genotype. The green cluster is homozygous for A allele, which is from the elite parent. The red cluster shows plants that are heterozygous for the alleles from both parents, and the blue cluster represents plants that are homozygous for the allele from the unadapted parent. We do not need the first two, therefore we select the blue cluster as plants that are potentially resistant. And that is one of the ways that marker-assisted selection can be applied in a breeding program.